Welcome to Vodcast 2.3, Identity Matrices and Inverse Matrices. We're only going to be covering two things in this unit, Identity Matrices and Inverse Matrices. So remember when we talked about multiplication, we said when we multiply matrix A times matrix B, it's not always the same as matrix B times matrix A. However, let's look at this matrix multiplication problem. Feel free to do it out in your notes. When you do it out, you're going to find that you get a resulting matrix that looks like this, which looks surprisingly similar to matrix A. Okay, so if this is matrix A and this is matrix B, let's see what happens when we switch the order of A and B. So we're going to multiply matrix B times matrix A we actually get the same answer, which is still equal to matrix A. What we've discovered is a really unique thing called the identity matrix. Okay, so for a two by two, this is the identity matrix. Just like you can multiply any number by one and get that same number, so three times one equals three, you can do the same thing with the identity matrix and other matrices. So a matrix times its identity matrix is going to be itself, just like we saw in that previous example. So for a two by two matrix, two by two, this would be the identity matrix. So what if we add a three by three? We know that we can only multiply certain matrices by each other. We cannot multiply this identity matrix times a three by three. But that's okay because a three by three has its own identity matrix shown right here. You see a common theme forming where there's a diagonal of ones surrounded by zeros. That is what makes an identity matrix is this diagonal of ones surrounded by zeros. So maybe you can take a guess at what the four by four identity matrix looks like. If you drew something that looks like this, you would be right. So again, we have our diagonal of ones surrounded by zeros. So take a note that all identity matrices are square, which means that they have the same number of rows and columns. So the two by two identity matrix has two rows, two columns. The three by three identity matrix has three rows and three columns. And the four by four identity matrix has four rows and four columns making them square. So let's take these examples. I'd like you to pause here and take a look at matrix A and matrix B. Identify the property, the proper identity matrix. So I stands for the identity matrix. Remember that the I that you multiply times matrix A, which is a three by three, and the one that you multiply here for matrix B which is a two by two, are going to be different identity matrices. So just be careful when you're multiplying. I'd like you to do the multiplication of AI and then do the opposite multiplication of IA. For number three, I'd like you to write a five by five identity matrix. Pause now. So let's talk about inverse matrices, the other topic for this unit. Inverse matrices can be a little bit complicated, so I want you to listen closely and make sure you write out every step as we go through it. Do not be afraid to rewind and view these slides again because it does get a little bit complicated and can be difficult to understand. Alright, so we talked about adding matrices, subtracting matrices, multiplying matrices, but we specifically talked that we couldn't divide matrices. But that's okay because we found a way to get around it by using multiplication. Let me kind of explain this a little bit better. Let's take this algebraic expression right here. 2x equals 4. All right. One way that we could solve this, solve for x, is divide both sides by 2. So if we divide both sides by 2, we're going to get an equation that looks like this. However, if we think about it a little bit differently, we could say that not only are we dividing by two, we're actually multiplying by one half. 
So taking this different perspective is how we're going to solve for matrices, well, divide matrices using multiplication. So instead of saying we're going to divide by 2, we're going to multiply each side by 1 half. All right, continue to follow with me. It'll become a little bit more clear in a sec. So, how does all of this work? Well, let's take matrix A, for example, seen above. How do we find the inverse of matrix A? Take note of this notation right here. A with the superscript, negative 1, means inverse. Okay, so when we are looking at A, negative 1, we are looking for the inverse matrix. Okay? The key to all of our problems in finding inverse matrices lies in the identity matrix that we just reviewed. We're going to use the identity matrix in order to find the inverse. So let's take our matrix A, which you've written down in your notes, and we are going to go on to step number one to finding the inverse. First thing we're going to do is set up a double matrix, which is something that you've never seen before. So First, we're going to start with matrix A on the left side, and then we're going to put its identity matrix on the right side. The goal is to bring this identity matrix over to the left side. Don't worry, I'm going to walk you through each step, but that's the ultimate goal, is to bring the identity matrix over to the left side. When we do that, this side should become our inverse matrix. Okay? So, don't worry about that yet. All you need to do is write down in your notes this double matrix setup. Okay? And we'll continue on to step number two. Step number two is we're going to start canceling out column number one. So, go ahead and identify column number one. It's right here. What we need to do is identify what we could multiply row number one by in order to cancel out row number two when we added, when we add the two together. So we are only focusing on these two numbers. Since we have a negative four here, we would need a positive four in order to cancel out and equal zero when we added these together. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this whole row by two. Okay? So, we're going to multiply 2 by 2 is 4, 2 by 3 is 6, 2 by 1 um, is 2, and two, multiplying 2 by 0 would equal 0. Notice we haven't touched row number 2. We only multiplied row number 1, and we are only trying to cancel out column number 1. So now, when we add 4 plus negative 4, we're going to get 0. So we'll talk about that in step number 3. All right, so before you read and get confused, we're going to talk a little bit about our matrix that we have here. This is the matrix from the last step. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add row number one and row number two and put our answers in row number two of our new matrix. Okay, so here's the new matrix. What we did is we added row number one, which is right here, to row number two, and we put our answers in row number two of our new matrix. So four plus negative four is zero. Six plus negative five is one. Two plus zero is two. And zero plus one is one. So we have all of our answers to our addition in row number two. For row number one, we're going to go back to the original. So row number one is our original matrix problem. So here's our original matrix, and here's our original identity matrix. Okay, so just go ahead and put the original back in for row number one. Again, row number one is back to the original, but row number two is the resulting addition of row number one and row number two from your previous double matrix. If you have to rewind and go back, to figure out how we got those numbers, please do that now. Step number four is we're going to work on canceling out column number two. We already canceled out column number one. 
Now we need to work on canceling out column number two. If you'll notice, we have a three here and a one here. In order to cancel this out, we need a negative three in row two. So we need to multiply this entire row by negative three. When we do that, we get this matrix. So row number one stayed the same, and row number two was multiplied by negative three. Zero times negative three is zero. Negative three times one is negative three. Negative three times two is negative six. And negative three times one is negative three. Okay, so we're only worried about row number two canceling when we add the two rows together. Or column number two, I'm sorry. We're only worried about column number two canceling when we add the two rows together. So let's see what happens when we add the rows. Again, we are going to add row number one and row number two. There's a big difference. We're putting our answers in row number one. Last time we put them in row number two. So, okay, when we add, here's row number one. When we add row number one from our matrix that we had before in step number four, row number one plus row number two goes in row number one this time. So two plus zero is two. Three plus negative three is zero. One plus negative six is negative five. Zero plus negative three is negative three. So we only put our answers in row number one. So where do we get row number two? Well, we're going to add in row number, I'm sorry, this should be row number two, from step three. So if you go back to step number three in your notes, we are going to add row number two from step three. So here is row number two from step three. Okay, so that's back when we canceled out and did our addition last time. So row number two comes from step number three. Again, if you have to rewind and go back to how we came about these numbers or rewrite from step number three in your notes, um, I highly suggest that you do that. Okay, so this is our last step. I want to remind you that our goal is to make an identity matrix on the left side. We're very close. We have our two zeros, we have a one, but we have this problem child here, this two. That two should be a one in order to have an identity matrix. But it's easily solved because what we're going to do is we are going to multiply row number one by one half. Remember, we can't do dividing. 2 divided by 2 would be 1. That would solve all of our problems. But since we can't divide in matrices, we're going to multiply. And when we're dividing by 2, we're actually multiplying by 1 half. So we're going to multiply row number 1 by 1 half. 2 times 1 half is going to be 1. 0 times 1 half is 0. Negative 5 times 1 half would be negative 5 over 2 and negative 3 times 1 half would be negative 3 over 2. So we have our identity matrix here, and this matrix on this side should be our inverse matrix, or our a to the negative 1. So we're done. Let's just check our answer, okay? So we have our inverse matrix which we found, we have our original A matrix, and we know that A multiplied by its inverse should be an identity matrix, should be the identity matrix. So I'd like you to do that multiplication in your notes now. And what you'll find is that it does in fact work. So I'd like you to find the inverse matrix of this matrix A right here. Carefully follow each of the steps. If you have to rewind and look at them again, that's not a problem. Remember you want an identity matrix on the left side. Once you see that identity matrix, you know that you have the inverse on the right. Good luck!